Hello students, I welcome you all to the second session of the subject Computer Concepts and C Programming. In this session, we will begin with the unit 1 and the topics we are going to cover are basic definitions, we are going to learn what you mean by software and the types of software, we are going to look into the different types of programming languages used for programming, then we are going to look into language translators and then we are going to learn what you mean by program development life cycle. Let us now begin with some of the important and basic definitions. The very first definition we are going to learn is the computer. What do you mean by computer? Computer is nothing but an electronic device used for computations. This is one of the basic definition which you can find in almost all websites like Wikipedia and almost all fundamental books on computer science. What do you mean by electronic device? It is nothing but it is made up of electronic circuits. Next, we will just try to elaborate the uh, next level of the definitions of computer. So, computer can also be defined as a system that accepts inputs, processes it and produces desired output. When we tell that it processes the input, how does it proceed? It processes with the help of predefined instructions. It, it, help, it process with the help of predefined instruction. Keep this in mind because this is the most important part of the definition. So, inputs are nothing but you are going to supply with the help of input devices and this process, uh, processor process is done by the processor which is also called as the central processing unit in which you have control unit, in which you have arithmetic and logic unit and also you have the storage unit. The control unit is nothing but the manager of the computer system which manages all the operations of the computer. Whereas the ALU which is called as the arithmetic and logic unit is responsible for performing arithmetic and logical operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, comparing, logical and etc. And the storage unit is responsible for storing the input processed instruct I mean processed data as well as instructions so storage unit can further be divided into primary memory and secondary memory primary memory is responsible for storing intermediate data whereas secondary memory which is also called as the permanent memory is responsible for storing permanent data after the data is processed so this is the most fundamental definitions of computer. Next, we will look into some more important definitions. While defining the computer, I said there is one important point that is instructions. Now we will define what you mean by instructions. If I say please go switch on the light, it is nothing but an instruction I am giving you to switch on the light. Similarly an instruction in the uh, scenario of computer or computer concepts is nothing but an instruction a command to the processor to perform an operations. A command to processor to perform 
and off push. What do you mean by operation? The operation can be accepting an input, displaying the output, fetching the data, copying, moving, etc. It can be any kind of operations or it can even be a computation. So how this command has been written? Command means instruction. Instruction is a meaningfully written statement as per the syntax of the programming language. I hope you have understood the concept of instruction. Next, we will see the definition for program. Program is called as set of instructions. To be precise, to perform a particular task. That is, program is nothing but collection of instructions to perform a particular task. What can be a task? A task can be to check a number is prime or not. Similarly, to check a number is order even, it can be to sort set of numbers in some order, etc. So, program is nothing but collection of instruction to perform a particular task. Now, after learning this concept, we will look into the next concept. Now, we will see what I mean by a software. Software is nothing but collection of programs. That means software is nothing but set of programs. So it is not one program, it is more than one programs. For example, I have a calculator software. I want to create document, so I will use a word software. I want to maintain accounts of an organization. I will use a tally software. I want to check whether my network connections are working fine or not. I will use a network diagnostic software. I want to use a computer, I will use an operating system X. So these are some of the examples of software. I hope you have understood the concept of instruction, program and software. So the hierarchy is like this, instruction a command to the processor, program, set of instructions and software, set of programs. Now, we shall uh, look into the classification of software. Software can be divided into two categories, system software 
and application software. A software that manages the operations of the computer is called as system software. So, manages the operations of computer. Whereas, a software which is defined or which is created for a specific application is called as application software. So, created for specific application. When I define the, ex uh, the def I mean examples for, when I gave some examples for software, I listed out some of the softwares. So, I'll take the same example, the network diagnostic the operating system are all examples for system software. Whereas, other example what I gave like Tally, Word, College Management System, etc. belong to the category of application software. Now, we'll try to understand even more in depth what is the difference between these two. For this, I'll draw a simple diagram. Here, I will write HW. HW is not the homework, it is nothing but the hardware. Hardware are nothing but electronic components of the computer. So this hardware, if it has to bring into life, we need the software which is called as the system software. So that is, manages the operations of the computer. Computer is made up of electronic devices. So this software is sitting upon the hardware. So in other words, it makes this hardware alive. And then on top of it, we have application software. So if you look at this diagram, you can come to know system software provides a platform for the application software to run and execute or to do its operations. So system software is sandwiched between the hardware as well as the application software. So students, I hope now you are able to clearly differentiate the difference between system software and application software and how system software is essential for making an hardware come into, come into life or in other words, how to manage the operations of the hardware or computer. Now, we will look into the programming languages. I am communicating with you in English language. You are able to understand, I am also able to understand whatever you say. Because we are all human beings and we have been trained on different languages like English, Hindi, Kannada. Similarly, we cannot talk to a computer with the help of English because computer is not a human. It cannot understand English. If we have to communicate to the computer with its own language created for it to communicate. So, programming language with respect to computer concepts it means that it is a language to communicate with machines. So, if you want to develop a software, you have to write program. For writing program, you need instructions and all these instructions are written with the help of programming languages. 
so i hope that you understood what do you mean by programming language now we will see the different types of programming language i'll take one more chalk basically there are three types machine level language assembly level language and high level language now we'll try to understand what are all these three types and how we communicate with the computer with the help of these three types of programming language first we'll take up the machine level see if you look at the name itself you can come to know what is this language all about the language that is understood directly by the machine is called as machine level language as i said earlier computer is an electronic device how electronics devices work it works with the principle of signals so that is off state and on state so basically machine level language is nothing but a language of binary which means it is made up of only two digits that is zero and ones suppose you want to write a program to solve a problem then your program instructions should be composed of the combination of zeros and ones now you will be scratching your head oh god so complicated it is yes this particular language was used in first generation Uh, first generation sorry computers so when the first generation computers came into existence our engineers scientists users were communicating with the help of this language so i'll take one simple example the suppose you want to perform an operation it has to be a combination of ones and zeros so if you want to perform an instruction the instruction would be something like this and each set of bits is coded which means that it has got a predefined meaning okay when you decode it that's what the machine level language is all about when you look at this machine level language this language looks more complex therefore we can say that this machine level language has got a lot of drawbacks what are the drawbacks first of all it is very complex in nature very difficult to write uh, uh, programs using this language and suppose you make a mistake identifying the mistake it's also also very difficult so managing itself becomes a herculean task so machine level language is looking at it it looks very simple but it is very complex to manage now we'll see the next language that is assembly level language obviously when there is a lot of drawbacks 
people will not sit idle they work on solving the drawbacks when where they saw tremendous problems in machine level language the scientists and engineers evolved or developed a new kind of language which they call it as assembly level, le assembly level language so which means that it is a language which is made up of mnemonics so the instructions are written in the form of mnemonics what is this word mnemonics it means that it is a symbolic codes means you are representing some english like symbols or codes for particular operations take for example i want to perform addition of two numbers 2 plus 3 if i want to do this in assembly level assembly level language i will say add 2 comma 3 so add is a symbolic code it is a mnemonic it is adding 2 comma 3 suppose i want to copy the contents of or the move the contents of one uh, uh, storage location to another storage location so if i say move a comma b means that i'm moving whatever is there in storage location a to b this is what assembly level language is all about in this assembly level language it was used in second generation computers and also it is called as second generation programming language so compared to machine level language assembly level language looks pretty decent and simple obviously but it also has got some drawbacks means people have to remember lot of codes to compose a program and create a software so scientists and engineers did not sit quiet they developed the next language then they call it as a high level language this high level language is very close to how we communicate in english so that means it is a english like language used to communicate with the machine so programs written using high level language will be very very easy and understandable because we are using english like language so i'll list out some of the examples your c which we are going to learn in this semester in this course is an example for high level language C++ Java Python which is very popular now PHP C# sharp etc all these are examples for high level language this high level language is the current generation programming language and this high level language is divided again into two categories there are generally two category of high level language procedural language and object oriented language procedural language is nothing but a structured programming language i'll write it as short form pl i'll get one more chart this chart is not of good quality now 
we'll try to understand what do you mean by structured programming language. A uh, structured programming language is a language which follows the approach of top-down design. Which means a big problem is broken down into smaller sub-problems. This sub-problem is also called as sub-programs. That's the reason sub-procedural. For each of the sub-problem, we write a procedure. That's what the approach of top-down design is all about. So, whichever programming language follows this approach, it is called as procedural language or structured programming language. Your C is an example for structured programming language. Pascal is an example for structured programming language. Fortran is an example for structured programming language. And COBOL is also an example for structured programming language. Another category of programming language is called as the object oriented language. Looking at the title or the uh, definition itself, you can uh, come to know what exactly this object oriented. A language which is based upon objects is called as object oriented programming language. Let's understand this in simple words. When procedural language came into existence, it was only concerned about how to solve using functions or procedures. It did not bother how, who is using the data and what functions those data is being consumed. In object oriented programming language, the problem was solved over here by binding the data and the functions together as a single unit and they call it as a object. Object are nothing but real world entities. So based upon real world entities. So object oriented language is based upon objects. Your C++, Java, C Sharp, PHP, Python, almost all the latest programming languages follows object orientation in nature. That means it is much more better than the procedural language. Students, I hope now you understood what do you mean by programming language and what are the different types of programming language and in high level language what are the subcategories. Now we we'll look into the next concept that is nothing but the language translators. Now, we we'll try to understand what do you mean by a translator by taking a simple example. Suppose you are watching a Miss World beauty pageant or beauty competition. You all know that when Miss World beauty competition is being conducted or organized, all the countries send their uh, representative that is the Miss of that particular country to that competition. For example, Miss India, Miss China, Miss America, etc. So, Oh, you also know that in the entire world, English is not the common language. In the majority of the uh, countries use English, but it is not common for all, right? So when Miss China comes on the stage to answer the questions posed by the judges, obviously the judges will ask the question in English, but Miss China cannot answer because she cannot understand English. So who do we need? We need a person who can understand English and translate it to Chinese. So that person is called as the translators. The same translators are also required in the 
computers why because whenever we are communicating to computers using programming language the computers cannot understand those directly because computers understand the language of ones and zeros which we discussed in the machine level language so if you are writing your program in assembly level language or you are writing your program using high level language that has to be converted to machine readable form or object or binary form that is done by the language translators i hope you have understood the concept of language translator so what it does is it takes input input is nothing but either assembly level language or high level language and we have the translator tree and it produces machine level language as output now we'll see what are the different types of translators we have assembler we have compiler and we have interpreter assembler is a translator which accepts assembly level language as input and converts into machine level language so if you are writing your program in assembly level language we need a assembler we'll take some examples for this tasm masm are the examples for assemblers what is this tasm masm which means turbo assembler masm means macro assembler next we look into the compiler compiler is nothing but a translator which takes high level language as input and produces machine level language example c compiler c++ compiler what how it actually converts it to machine level language suppose the judges ask the chinese five questions the translators converts all the five questions at once and converts it to chinese and tells the uh, tell the chinese all the five questions in chinese language that kind of uh, working is called as or that kind of conversion translation is called as compilation that is it takes the entire program of high level language and converts it to equivalent machine level language format so that's what the role of compiler is all about now we will see an interpreter an interpreter is also a translator obviously it does the destination conversion to machine level language and it takes input as high level language. we will go back to the same example the five questions posed by the judges to the miss china will be converted into chinese one question at a time so it or the translator is not converting all the five questions together the translator is converting one question at a time such kind of translation is called as interpretation so programs written in high level language instruction by instruction is fetched and converted to its equivalent machine readable form with the help of interpreter we list out some examples for interpreter java interpreter javascript interpreter python interpreter php interpreter so these are some of the examples for interpreters when we want to know 
or understand the difference between these two. See here, both also is taking high level language as input and converting it to machine level language. We came to know that one difference is it takes all the program, whole program at a time and converts. Here it takes instruction by instruction and converts. So the compiler works faster compared to the interpreter. But interpreter is most chosen because of its independence of the architecture or the destination computer. So when compilation takes place, that compiled code will be based upon execution on a particular machine whereas the interpreter irrespective of the, uh, the machine it will be executed. So this is what the different types of translators and we understood all the three different translators in detail. Next we will look into the program development life cycle. For this, we need to understand in a different scenario. Program development life cycle means that we want to develop a program and what is the life cycle? Life cycle is nothing but what are the different stages. Whenever you want to develop a software or a program, you will not directly start typing the code in the computer and develop the software that is most haphazard way of developing the program because if you are not doing anything in a systematic way definitely whatever the end product will not be of use therefore we will be following a systematic approach for development of program by the use of computers so what are those there are set of stages so i'll just say stages in program development the very first stage is called as problem definition the next stage problem analysis the next stage is design and the next stage is coding or implementation and the next stage is debugging and the next stage is documentation and the last stage is and the last stage is maintenance I hope that whatever I have written in the last is being captured by the camera. We we'll try to understand one by one in detail. Problem definition. Definition is nothing but defining. Whatever you want to solve with, with the help of computers, you need to define. Define clearly without any ambiguity or confusion. Suppose you want to solve or sort a set of numbers in some ascending order. So you need to clearly define that the problem is sort the numbers in ascending order. Numbers means what kind of numbers? It is integers or floating point numbers. Everything has to be clearly defined. And how many numbers you want to sort? How many numbers you want to give it as input? All this, if you are clearly defining, it is called as problem definition. I hope you have understood the concept. Next, we look into the problem analysis. This is very crucial or critical stage in program development. If you do any mistake here, obviously you will tend to have more problems in the further stages. In problem analysis, you are going to do complete analysis of the input, desired output and what are the constraints. For example, if you want to sort n numbers, can you give n as 1 lakh, 20 lakh, whether it is possible to solve it by the computer? All those are constraint. What is the maximum limit? What are, can you divide it by zero? No. 
So these are the constraints. So what input you are taking, what is the desired output, all this uh, uh, and how you are going to approach all these you are going to do in this particular stage. After you have done the, the problem analysis stage, next you have the design. Whenever you want to construct a house, directly you will not uh, construct the house without any plan. You will make a plan, you go to an architect, the architect builds the model of your house using a blueprint. So that is called as the design in our perspective. So here design means we are using some tools to model the problem. So model in the sense we are not directly solving it, we are just coming out with a model to check its efficacy. So you are using some tools like algorithms or graphic charts like flowcharts etc. Once you are done with the design and you come to know that your model is perfectly fine, you can start going, to, you can start coding or implementing you using desired programming language. So you can take the help of any of the programming language like C, C++, Java, Python according to the need and then you can type the program. Once coding has been done, there might be some errors. Some errors will be rectified during the coding itself. Such kind of errors comes uh, under the scanner of compilation process. Whereas in uh, some errors which are not come under the scanner of the compilation process has to be removed or eliminated in the next stage that is the debugging. Debugging is the art of removing errors. That's what debugging means. So here you are going to remove the errors or mistakes whatever is there in the developed program or software. This is also very important because if you are coming out with a program with mistakes or with errors then obviously nobody will like to use that software or a program. Once you have done this your software is ready to port which means that it is ready for usage. How to use? Obviously you have to tell the users by giving them a documentation such kind of documentation is being recorded in this particular stage. Here you are going to concentrate on developing two kinds of documentation or one is also called as technical documentation and other kind of documentation such as user level documentation like user manuals. Once this stage is completed then you will go with the last stage that is maintenance. Under maintenance stage what you are going to do is you are going to do some operations which are requested by the users like coming out with a new module or changes in the software or there might be some mistakes or errors that is encountered during its operational so that such kind of work will be done in the maintenance stage and in the maintenance stage the uh, technical team will consult the documentation prepared in the earlier stage. This is what the entire flow for solving a problem with the help of computers. I will just brief once again. In this stage you are going to define the problem. In this next stage you are going to analyze it with respect to constraints, input and output and then you are going to use tools such as graphical tools or algorithm to design or model the problem and then you are going to start typing the uh, uh, code using programming language and then you are going to rec uh, remove the errors or eliminate the errors in the debugging then you come out with some documentation it can be user documentation or technical documentation and finally you are going to go for the maintenance of the program, software or the program. So this is all about the stages in program development life cycle. I hope uh, I have conveyed to you in the simplest form of term and uh, you have understood all the concepts. Now coming to the important concepts in this uh, among these topics. So in examination there will be short short questions on software types, programming language and language translators. So I can rate 5 star rating for this. Either you will get 2 marks or 4 marks and very very easy to attend. Pro 
program development life cycle will also come and give a 4 star rating for this and this will appear for uh, lengthy questions that is descriptive answer not for 2 marks question in the next session we will look into the design tools for development of the program specifically we look into algorithms until then happy learning thank you